morning. Hi, boys and girls. <clears throat> well, it's another Sunday morning, and here we are again. Um, kind of cold. I've got the fireplace on out here, and uh, it's going to be colder Mother's Day morning than it was Christmas morning. So, kind of crazy, isn't it? Anyway, I'm so glad you're with us this morning, and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about our Walking with Jesus, I hope you got your little books and that you're doing them. Uh, we're going to continue our Walking with Jesus on our, our uh, classes like this for a while until we can get back together. And I hope that you've been able to do a page or two in there because uh, we're talking a little bit today about something a little bit different. I'm going to include some pictures that will show you some of the, the latest little project I've been doing. One of the things I'm doing now is I'm... Uh, making bread, baking bread, and making rolls and loaves of bread and things that I haven't done in several years. I used to do this all the time, but I'm glad to get to a chance to do it. So it's a, uh, it's an, uh, not something new, but something that I've decided to do again. And one of the things that I found out is you're going back and learning to do something again or learning something new is that it takes time. It takes a lot of time, and, and so you have to prepare the recipe, and you have to follow the recipe, and, and you have to do what you're supposed to do with it, or it doesn't work out. And sometimes we fail, and, and you have to start all over. And that's what happens to us in life, too, isn't it? Sometimes we fail, and we have to start all over. The, the bread that I'm using, you know, it takes flour, and you add a little sugar to it, and you add a little salt to it, and you add all these different things to it. But the main thing that makes it work and makes it fluff up and be beautiful big bread is the starter. And the starter is a special recipe that's been put together for that very reason, to activate. You know what? In the Bible, it talks about Jesus is the bread of life. The starter in this bread is like Jesus is for us. The starter is the thing that activates us. So when we put Jesus in our heart and we start studying about Jesus and we start reading the Bible, we start uh, reading the Bible stories and learning about all the things that happened in the Bible many years ago, we find out that that activates us. By having Jesus in our heart, we want to tell people about Jesus. We want to do the right things. We want to help our mom and daddy. We want to be kind to other people. That's the activating. That's what makes us get out and do these things and, and satisfies us. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's Jesus is our starter. And that's what makes us have a productive life. Our life can be simple. It can be satisfying. But we want to do what Jesus tells us to do. So Jesus helps us. He said when you're making bread and you, you put it in the bowl and it sets out all night and then it rises up. That's kind of like it works with us. Jesus gives us this stuff. It goes into our heart. We read the Bible. We learn it. And in our mind, we know what to do. And it sits there. And it kind of grows. And then you start activating and doing these good things. The more good things you do, the better you feel. And the more satisfying your life is. So let Jesus be the bread of your life. And today I'm going to include some pictures that you all sent me. Of some of you showing that you have Jesus in your life when you're learning to do things at home and help others. So for the next few minutes I want you to watch these few little pictures that I got and hopefully I'll get some more from the rest of you showing me some of the things that you did this week to show that you're helping your parents, you're helping your mom at home, and that you're showing Jesus love. I love you very much. I'll see you in a few minutes. So why would I let worry still 
boys and girls. I showed you the buttons, and we're going to talk a little bit about Mother's Day, but we're going to talk about these buttons. Right now I have on a shirt that I just put on over the other shirt I had on, that if I take my fingers and I put the button into the buttonhole, and I put it together, look what happens when I button things up. This is what buttons do for us. What do you think they do? What are they doing? It's holding that together. See the buttons? How the buttons are holding my shirt together? Well, guess what? That's what mamas do. Mamas hold our families together. Mamas have to hold our lives together. So they're the button that's holding us all together. I want you to remember that we have buttons all kinds of places and I'll, I'll show you a few pictures that show you some different places that we find buttons in our life. But one of the things is this is a little shirt that belonged to my grandsons when they were little. They had buttons on them. Even little kids, even though when these kids were this little, they couldn't button them themselves and maybe you can't button your shirt yourself. But then that's when mama comes over and she takes the shirt on you and she buttons it in place. What is she doing? She's helping to hold your life together. She's helping to put your shirt together, sure. But that's what mamas do. They help hold the family. They help hold your life together. So but mothers are very important. And when we look at this collection of buttons here that I have so many different buttons here, you'll see, and if you've ever played with buttons, you know, they come in all kinds of sizes. Look at these, these are all kinds of sizes, aren't they? They're big buttons and little buttons and that button looks like a star. And this one looks like a great old big button and it's even got, how many holes does it have? It has four holes in it. This button looks like a leaf. This button, it's called a shank button, has a little loop back here where you use it. That button goes on something usually a little more dressy. What does this button look like? That button looks like a little, can you see it? Looks like a little heart. This button looks like a little pumpkin, doesn't it? There are big buttons, there are little buttons, there are, but all buttons are hard. So today when we're talking about buttons, I want to remind you that some, some people right now are having a hard time. This has been a hard time. We've been home for now almost three months. Some people have been out of work. Some people are working in the healthcare industry and that's very stressful. Some mamas and daddies have been having to go to work and come home and teach you your school things. So it's been a hard time for some people. It's been a blessing in a many ways, but it's also been a hard time. So I would like for us to stop right now, close our eyes, and let's just say a little prayer for people that are having a hard time. Dear Jesus, I bring these children with you this morning because I pray that if there are any things, if they're having hard times in their families, that you will help them, that you will protect them, that you will give them their needs and help them to get through this difficult time. I pray for all the people that we don't know that are also struggling with this. And I pray that you will help them and help us know how we can help them. In Christ's holy and blessed name, amen. So what did I make? Can you tell what shape that is? Sure, that's a heart shape. You can make a heart shape with your glue. You could just put your glue on your paper, lay your, lay your uh, button down any place you wanna put it there. Glue your buttons on in a shape of a heart for mom. And then you could color it or you could write your mom's name in there or write in there that you love mom. And that would be a sweet little project you and mom could do together. Remember, our mothers are very special, and they hold us together, boys and girls. They help hold our life together. They help hold our families together. Happy Mother's Day, moms. Okay, boys and girls, in talking about buttons, I want to end with one little funny thing. It's to look at this, all of these things, and I bet you'll recognize some of these things. What are these things? Do you have these at your house? What are they? They all have buttons on them. Buttons are very important. 
Just like we learned in our lesson about our mamas. Our mamas help hold our families together, just like the buttons help to hold my shirt together. And they also help us to get things done, don't they? Do moms help us get things done? Certainly they do. Moms help us to get things done. So I want you to rem I want to help you remember this. This was taken uh, eight years ago when Madison was just about five years old, maybe four or five years old, and I had just gotten my first iPad. Now watch this. I want you to enjoy this few minutes. This is Madison talking about the buttons. Walking behind you. Now make it cute. <laughs> How do you do it? Click that red button. Well, it's not working. <laughs> Go quick. It won't take. So, boys and girls, as your life goes on and you're trying to deal with this one, this one goes to my fireplace. Is this button going to work on my telephone? No. Is this button going to, this telephone button going to work if I want my, my Netflix to work? No. So your buttons have to be right. So you have to know what God wants us to do, what moms and dads want us to do, and make sure that we're not pushing the wrong buttons. Make sure that we're doing what we should be doing. One of the ways to do that is to listen to your parents, follow the directions in the Bible, and pray. And remember, Push the right buttons.